Brian sagt, es ist okay, dann ist es wahrscheinlich okay. <lacht> <lacht> ja. Super. Genau, habe dann ähm, da eine Weile gearbeitet, auch als Instructor, bis halt Covid passiert ist. Ähm, bin dann ja, Mitte, so im Juli, genau, Juli 2020, bin ich heim äh, nach Deutschland. Was komisch war, das erste Mal seit sieben Jahren wieder bei den Eltern zu leben. Muss ich sagen, uh, ist ein, ja. äh, ich, ein seltsames ich, ich, Gefühl. Okay, ich glaube, wir sind jetzt live. Huh? Gerne. Wir sind, wir sind eine Minute früher, sehr gut. Okay, hello everyone. Hey guys, right. how's it going? Okay, let's just take a minute to get everybody in the room. Ah, I see, we are now live. Um, let's just have a few seconds. We'll just let everybody come to the room. And then as soon as uh, we have a few people here, then we can start our talk. Okay, awesome. We actually already have quite a lot of people watching us. Wonderful. <laughs> Okay, hi and welcome everyone. Welcome to another edition of our Facebook Live Talks. Uh, this month we're actually dedicating to becoming a pro. So the year of 2022, SSI really wants to dedicate to uh, educating more instructors. Now that we're slowly, slowly moving out of the pandemic, hopefully, uh, moving back in and out as we all, as we all know and feeling, but we see tourism coming back worldwide. And what we see along with tourism coming back worldwide is a gigantic lack of instructors. Dive centers worldwide are looking for instructors everywhere. And that's why we want to encourage people, young people, people looking to change their profession, people looking for a new profession to maybe look into becoming a diving instructor. And to inspire you guys, uh, we have a very special guest here. This is Lucas. Lucas will tell us a little bit about living the dream of a, being an instructor in Thailand. Uh, he's in Thailand currently, and he's working as an instructor there. He's living the absolute dream, the dream that we all have as diving instructors, uh, being on the beach all day, going diving, and actually having that as your job. So hi, and welcome, Lucas. Hi, yeah, thank you very much for having me today. Um, Hey guys, my name is Lucas. Um, yeah, I'm an SSI instructor over here in Thailand. Currently, I'm living on the island of Koh Phen Yang um, in the Gulf of Thailand on the eastern side. And yeah, um, I'm very happy, very pleased to be here. Thanks, Lucas. I'm really glad to have you and I'm really excited about this talk because I also, I've been in your shoes. I've been living the few years of working as an instructor and it's just been probably the best time of my life. Now I'm sitting in an office, so. Maybe I should maybe I should consider going back. Um, not but yeah, a bad choice. Not a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> everybody out there, everybody listening right now. If you're listening live, you can just if you have any questions for Lucas or me or uh, in regards to SSI, just ask them in the comments. You can ask them, and we will answer them as much as we can right now. And if you're watching the replay, you can also still write your questions in the comments, and we will happily go into the comments later and in the next few days still uh, to answer any of your questions. Okay, Lucas, just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, right, yeah. So, um, like I said, my name is Lucas. Um, before coming here to Thailand, I was actually living for a few years in New Zealand, working in the movie industry there. Went on a holiday to Thailand for the first time, uh, went to Phuket, did my very first dive there. And it's pretty much the first second I took a breath underwater, I was hooked. And I knew like, wow, diving is amazing. Um, so if anybody's out there that hasn't been diving before, I highly encourage to just give it a try. And for me, it was like this, this instant second of this is, this is amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I uh, did my first dive there. I came back, started, um, started diving around and as I went along, I just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and yeah, it turned out that I ended up in a place like this, living so, on a tropical island in Asia and yeah, enjoying life. Living the absolute dream. So when was the point where you actually decided, ah, let me just switch from whatever career I had before in the movie industry I hear, uh, and now I want to be a diving instructor? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for me, it was... Um, Every, every weekend, basically, I spent just going out for fun dives. And 
I was the the beauty of it was the the dive center in um, Wellington, the main city of New Zealand where I was living. The people there were so encouraging, and it was basically the the entire community. It was it was just such a great community. So you were constantly meeting new people. Uh, you had seasoned divers that would show you like the little tricks and niches, and it was just such a fantastic vibe that it kept driving me to like go back and go back and keep doing more dives and just spend more time on the water. Um, that after I've done about like 25 dives or something, I started doing my advanced and started getting into a little bit of wreck diving. And that's when I realized like, wow, you actually, this, this could become a serious thing, like to actually move you away from the, the movie industry. Um, and I was looking for, for another thing. So rather than settling in New Zealand after living there for almost four years, it's like, well, before settling, uh, finding a wife, having kids and, and fully putting roots down, I decided I needed one more like the one big out and like travel around and, and see the world so um, I booked the flight to the Philippines and I decided to travel Asia for a few months and as I was traveling along and did um, dives in the Philippines and Bali and all over the place um, for me it was just as soon as I came to Copenhagen this, this island instantly grabbed me and I was like wow this it, it just had this this magic pull where I was like yes this is this is amazing I want to stay here um yeah so afterwards as soon as as i started diving here um i was actually trying to contact as many dive schools as i can trying to find out more about yeah what what possibilities do i have how could i get involved in the diving industry that's awesome um so you said you just went and contacted dive centers and that made you become an instructor so what was the point where you decided instructor is the thing that i want to do why did um, you become instructor really? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the time when and, and the reason why is like, okay, so um, I always wanted to be a dive instructor to answer the question of when. There's, for me, I, I love teaching people. And, and the main thing I love about being a diving instructor is you are actually the, a, a key role of making uh, or having, having the student that is going from the very beginning, for example, for an open water course, um, and, and you're there teaching them the whole equipment and, and all the, the techniques and everything that is great about the underwater world. And you actually, you get to experience it with them every single time when someone goes for the first dive, takes the first breath underwater or the first time they, they I don't know, see a big barracuda or something. That's the, the magic in their eyes. It's just that, that sparkle you get with every single customer, which makes it for me like so, so amazing. Like there's, it is the perfect reason to get out of bed in the morning because you know you're going to have a group of people that are all like in amazingly motivated they all want to go out diving they're all like either like they either love being underwater and they've been diving before or sometimes for example you have someone who's who's maybe has a fear of being underwater so you actually get to be there and and help them work through that fear and this is this is actually an, an amazing thing that I think is like when you have someone, when they start the open water course, they're a little bit afraid about going in the water. And three days later or four days later, when the, the open water course is done, you go like, could you ever imagine three days ago that you would do this? And like, no, I'm, I'm feeling so great, so confident. So you're actually getting to see their progress. And, and yeah, the, the love, they, the way they're just like enjoying it is, it is fantastic. It's for me, it's the most satisfying feeling in the world, I guess. 100%. I, I completely agree with it. And what I, also, what I also feel about being an instructor is your days are never the same, even though you do the same thing over and over again, but yeah. your customers are different. The challenges are different. There's always okay, something yeah. different. Today, there's a current in a different direction. Today, one customer can equalize. To, and there's different things every day and different challenges. So you don't have that like I'm going to the office, answer those same emails every day. Yeah, There's yeah. something about it that changes and that just keeps it exciting and just keeps you moving. And you can teach different courses. You don't just teach open waters. You can teach different courses. And once you even get into professional levels, teaching dive guides, it's so much fun because now you can teach someone the thing that you love so much, which yeah, um, yeah. It, there's, really, there's really nothing better than that. Yeah. Okay, so what do you what would you say is the best part about your job? It's tricky. There's, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are fantastic. Um, I mean, 
you get to spend your entire day outside in in the nature i mean how amazing is that you're not sitting in a cubicle or you're not stuck in front of a computer but you're actually out there enjoying nature day by day um which is absolutely fantastic also the what i really like is it's not just that you're you're viewing it but you also get an understanding of uh how the ecosystem works like how marine life intacts and and you get to share that knowledge and and you get to like to to teach people like this is what you're seeing this is how this works and there's, there's a lot of great things about being a dive instructor <laughs> i should probably have asked what's the worst thing which thing. is <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, it's yeah. like we said, it's the best job in the world. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Is. It definitely is. <laughs> so how did you end up in Thailand? And a little bit more into that is why is Thailand such a great place for the particular job you're doing, but just to live as well? Right. Um, why Thailand? Uh, like, like I was saying, I was traveling all around Asia already thinking like wow this maybe i can turn my life or like maybe i can turn diving into a future career um and like i said as soon as i set foot on Koh Phangan, I, I instantly fell in love with the island it is it is not overcrowded there's it's not too small like an island that's only i don't know 200 meters wide and 300 meters long way you, you would get bored after being there for a few months but mm. it, it's got the the perfect balance of everything i think um the community is really engaging a lot of people here think uh, in an eco-conscious way so they're actually trying to upcycle or find renewable energy sources which is really big on the island which i highly like which i absolutely love about it um and the, the biggest thing i reckon is we've got the angtong marine park so a national marine park of thailand just around our corner um so for us with our speedboat it's it's a 35 40 minute ride and you're in 102 square kilometers of pristine corals of fantastic marine life um ranging from like you we have pink belly dolphins two turtles to so many things you can see underwater um it is and, and you're not shy of dive sites either you can either go local if you want to go for a quick dive you can go for easy dive sites if you want to do some confined or if you've experienced people that just want to see something different you can do that as well there's the is so much versatility uh, like so many things to explore and see and um even out of the water there there's a lot of things to do so yeah for me like coming here and and starting my own company um last year in 2021 with my two friends was was just the, the perfect decision of saying like all right we're gonna we're gonna set base here and we're gonna start our own adventure company and try yeah and, and just show people like how many amazing things there are around here because you could easily live three four months here and every day do an activity and it's you still wouldn't wouldn't be bored or like wouldn't be shy of, of opportunities to do something else which is absolutely amazing and that's that's something i think about choosing a destination or place to live and if you want to live there for a longer time is super important um oh, like yeah. you said yeah. like like going to the maldives is absolutely amazing but it can yeah. be a very tricky place for example like what the small islands can be very difficult to stay for more than one year uh yeah. many years because you get a little bit like locked up <laughs> so absolutely yeah having a lot of opportunities of doing stuff on land in the water really makes makes thailand such a great destination 100 agree definitely, so definitely, yeah. so you said you just um you, you just founded your own company, basically started your own training center. Because we're talking about diving as a career, can you tell us a little bit more about the different jobs, the different uh, roles in a dive center, what instructors do? Um, yeah, the different things that are happening and going on in your training center and in training centers out of your experience. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so for us, the, the biggest part was always saying like, we are, everybody's sharing the work. So you don't have like one person that's just designated to filling the tank. So he's always the, the poor guy at the end of the day that just has to stand there full of things. But we actually share, we do rosters uh, to make sure everyone can can experience the whole thing. Everybody understands how all of the equipment works, how every working step is uh, is, is organized and why. Um, and basically how it works is we 
if we'd have, um, for example, in the morning, we reached out for a fun dive, um, it'd be my pleasure to get up at six o'clock in the morning, load all the tanks, drive them to the boat, uh, load them on. After that, I'd go out, greet the customers, um, give them a little bit of like a, a rundown of what we're doing on the day. Um, we try on the equipment, make sure everything's fitting, pack our bags, bring them straight to the boat, um, and then we drive out to whatever dive site where we're sorting for the day. It might be um, Sail Rock because that's one of the most popular dive sites in the Gulf of Thailand, and that's where the whale sharks are at the moment. It might be the Angkor Marine Park because there might be pink belly dolphins or turtles around or um, w whatever the customer might choose is like, oh, this is this is a place I haven't seen, I want to check out. So we'd go there, go for a dive, have lunch either on the boat if we had Sail Rock or actually park on one of the beaches in the Marine Park have lunch on like a pristine beach um, and just, yeah, and enjoy a little bit of time there, have the surface in the wall, go for a second dive, and then you'd be heading back. Um, yeah, just having, having a great time with the customers, maybe talking a little bit about future training or what they're interested in. Um, a lot of times people are also asking like, what else can we do on the island? So you, you spend a lot of time, um, yeah, just, just chatting with the customers and, and making sure they're, they're having the best time that they can um then when we get back we'd usually finish all the paperwork um then yeah it'd be washing the equipment um charging the tanks like i said this is shared by everyone so um yeah everyone's uh, is, is knowing how the how the whole setup is working and yeah then do a little bit of either i don't know maybe enjoy a beer after uh, with the customers after the work is done or hang out with uh, the rest of the the, um, the the company guys maybe we were planning another trip um, there might be people calling for for other dive trips to organize so yeah just after that it's basically it's it's hard to say what a typical day is like this it, it always changes it's always a bit different and it's, that's the best part about it isn't it yeah. <laughs> You, you never bought. That's the thing. Like it, it doesn't matter if it's if it's a different customer, if it's a different dive site, if it's even just a different day. Like it, yeah. it always, your conditions always change, and that, that's such a great part about it. So I, I now have a question that you that you might not be hundred percent prepared for. What made you think of opening a business in the middle of a global pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> um, Which I think is really brave and very cool. By the way. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> well, to be honest, it was it was always my dream to own uh, my own dive shop um, at some day. So, back before the pandemic, I was working here with another dive shop, um, and over the the course of the years, me and one of the owners of the dive shop, we actually became best friends. Um, so, as the pandemic was hitting, we're saying, "All right, we're going to restart, we rebrand, and and we're going to set this whole thing up." in over the years, like you find little spots where oh, I wish I could have done that. I wish I would have done it differently. So we said we're going to do it in a whole different way now, knowing all the things we do know now. Um, and rather than just focusing on diving, actually expanding it to, to day trips as well and then overnight camping trips and um, re, like rechanging equipment and, and the way we, we set up the, the websites and stuff like that. So uh, as the pandemic was going on, uh, we both like we stayed in contact all the time, even though we were on the other end of the world. And yeah, we, we came to the decision to say like, you want to do it? I want to do it. Well, why do we wait? And at some point you, you just, it's always scary. It's always scary to start your own company, like hands down. And at some point you just have to say like, all right, we can either wait or we can start doing it. So we said, we buckle down and we give it our best shot. And so far it seems to be working pretty great. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit more about your, your center, your company. I know you, you do, like you just said, you do overnight trips, also some online stuff, I guess. Yep. Um, so our company, uh, KPEC, is called Koh Pangan Adventure Company. Um, so we are offering from like day trips, um, either driving around the island, um, hitting up all like the, the secluded beaches you might not get to by car or motorbike. Uh, doing tracks and then do setting up like a, a whole day tour around the island. Um, we've got tours for like sunset cruises where we just go out as the sun goes down. So you can 
go out either with like your romantic spouse sometimes with or, or you go out like with a couple of friends and you, you have a few drinks you have the music playing and have a great time on the ocean um our biggest seller i reckon is the the Anchor marine park doing day trips there uh, so as i said we take the speedboat out and you just have like this massive array of national park which is it's a fantastic place to be it's like those you can take the pictures you see on postcards where you're right on the location look around be like wow this this looks just like leonardo DiCaprio on the beach walking out and exactly that setting so it's absolutely fantastic we go out um either do diving trips there or we go snorkeling and then uh, hiking and then see all the viewpoints. It's, it really depends on, they, there's so much to offer. <laughs> it really depends what the people want to do. So we basically, we, we give them a vast array of like, this is everything you can do. Um, and we try and organize a little bit and make sure that, yeah, every, everything is like a little bit sorted out. Um, and then it's basically, we pretty much do everything you can do with a speedboat around the Gulf, kind of. <laughs> So it's, that's uh, awesome yeah <laughs> uh, what i really what i really like about it is that you kind of taking a little bit of a different approach to diving and if the if this whole situation the pandemic and all of it taught us one thing is maybe a different approach sometimes is a good thing and another thing is people are going away a little bit from wanting materialistic things and they want to have adventure in their life they want to have experience yeah. much more yeah. than that so yeah. i think the more this will be over, the more successful you guys will be. I think it's a, it's a very good idea and oh, it's, it's really cool. So I have another question. Um, how do you think, because you said you were working in the film industry before, how do you think that helps you with having your own company now? And how does it benefit you with everything you're doing right now? Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... <laughs> But when most people say, when I say I work in the film industry, most people anticipate that I was actually like, filming movies or something. So basically what I was doing is I was working for a Weta Workshop. Um, this is the same company that produced Lord of the Rings and Avatar. So we're talking a big Oscar, uh, Oscar nominee winning um, uh, studio there, uh, creative mm -hmm. studio. What I was doing is I was building uh, costumes, weapons and, and materials. So awesome. spending the four years there basically gave me a lot of trades, like I've, I've learned fiberglassing, welding, woodworking, uh, a little bit of electrician work, you name it, which comes in handy everywhere. Um, <laughs> but it's also the, the understanding that talking with people about how, how to film certain things, uh, what, what makes pictures look beautiful and, and getting a little vibe of that as well definitely helps with social media. So um, it's actually a lot of, a lot of the, the footage we take is actually already like we're not just walking around taking pictures, but we're trying to plan a little bit like what, what would look awesome? Like what would people enjoy to see? And, and also what can we offer that, that people would go like, yes, I want to, I want to go on this trip. Like this, this looks amazing. This is what I want to see. Um, it definitely, definitely helped a lot. I have to say yeah. That. yeah. And I agree, like social media is such a big part of having a business right now. And especially something like a diving business. Uh, yeah. People will go, and I mean, people spend literally the whole pandemic on their phones, looking at beautiful places they wanted to visit. And that just, that just helps being able to produce pictures and uh, being on social media, like we are showing off right now, um, is really, really so important for any business out there. And any business, any oh, scuba diving okay. center out there that is not working with social media, I'm just uh, trying to hint carefully. <laughs> You should probably go get on social media. Yeah, yeah, definitely. As, definitely. I mean, we, we have about 90% of our customers. It's all coming from uh, social media or from traffic on the website. So having, having a, a strong social media uh, strategy, having a good website sorted out, definitely is, is the key. It's the way forward, yeah. At the moment, especially like in the age that we're in that right now. So 100%. That's really awesome. Okay. Um, now I want to ask you a question. What tip would you give somebody considering becoming an instructor? Even maybe not considering just yet, but hopefully considering soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to give the exact same advice that I got given from my open water instructor, uh, which is dive with, uh, dive with as many people as you can. Like get involved in the community. This is one of the things I love about scuba dives is 
everybody is is very open minded. Everybody is very happy to help you or like to to teach you certain things. So um, just get as much experience as you can with different people, and and you, you'd always learn something from people that have been diving in different spots from people that have been diving the same spot for 300 400 times there's there's always something to be learned and i would say yeah find maybe find somebody who can who can act a little bit like a, a mentor so i was lucky enough that that i found that for myself um as soon as i i got into the the dive shop in wellington which it wasn't a, a big dive shop it's i think like three people maybe four people working there with the receptionist um, but it was such a, a tight knit community that everybody was just trying to to show me different ways, show me different things. They so they saw me underwater and immediately afterwards they're like, "Hey, try relaxing your uh, your back a little bit more," or like, I, "I saw you bumping around a bit a little bit. Try this to to control your buoyancy a bit more." Um, and if you want to become an instructor, it's, I mean, everybody in the diving community is friendly. If if you have the plan of becoming an instructor put the word out there, call your local dive shop, or if you want to go diving in um, Copenhagen, for example, uh, reach out to, to a dive shop there and, and yeah, just, just ask the people like, what is the diving they're like? Um, I want to become an instructor. Do you have like, what programs do you have? Like becoming a dive master or, or uh, things like that. So, so we, for example, we don't do the, the, I don't want to say quick and dirty, but we don't do like the, the quick and dirty dive master internship uh, where we stay for like six weeks. You, you quickly do your dives to you get certified and done. But we'd rather do an internship over multiple months where you get taught everything, like not just from uh, the, the things you need to, to cross off for your certification to be a capable dive master, but actually how the entire shop works, how the, the accounting works, how to, to, book, uh, to do all the booking systems. Um, everything that, that lies behind what it makes a dive shop so this is what we're actually teaching um which is why it takes a lot longer but it's it's the full experience so you're not just doing your dive masters but you actually do it like you do it over a course of months we learn how to work as as a member of the diving industry and after that you, you proper set up to yeah to uh find work in that experience um I'd say this, even once you're a dive master, there will always be situations that you haven't encountered before. So work as a dive master for a bit and, and get comfortable working with customers that already have the diving license before making the big leap to, to becoming an instructor um, and then having, yeah, having to teach people. So get comfortable with your diving skills, meet the community, get out there and yeah, I reckon this, this that's probably the, the best advice I could give. But I agree with make, you. Make, I agree. Make the connections. Like try, try and get involved, and, and people will come back to you. And there, that everybody's happy to share their knowledge and happy to share their, their insights. So, yeah, I hundred percent agree. I think that's a great tip. And if you are out there and you have the opportunity to go and take the internship, maybe you don't, you haven't settled, you haven't set your roots yet. Um, yeah. Go ahead and go for it. It's just, it's the best thing you can do. Uh, do the typical gap year, even if it's just for one or two years, it, yeah. it teaches you so much. I know when I was literally out of school, 18 years is when I became a dive, dive instructor right away. And I went off and it taught me so much. It it taught me all these things, like I'm able to speak in front of people now. I'm able to interact with people. I can tell about all my experiences. I can inspire other people to maybe do what, um, what I wanted to do, what I've done all my life. And as well as that, um, just being an instructor and being open to learning. I mean, I'm an instructor certified. I'm, I do all the stuff for us, for Mermaid and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I will still go out there and learn stuff from diving instructors everywhere. And don't Every stop time. learning. Never yeah. stop learning. Um, yeah. that's, that's all we can really say about that, I think. That's the most important part. If you are looking for an internship or uh, an instructor course, you can always go on the Dive Design website. Go check out the event calendar. Our event calendar is amazing now. It literally provides you everything you need you just put in the location that you want or you just allow it your location so it finds dive shops near you and you will get a gigantic list of events 
dive master courses, instructor courses, pretty much anything you need to become an instructor right there. And then you can super easily contact dive centers. Dive centers worldwide are ready for you to become an instructor. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, just, just see what courses are out there and then might even be a place you haven't heard of and you start researching and be like, ooh, actually, mm. this sounds very tempting. Yeah, and I mean, if this, like I said, if this taught us anything the last two years is maybe the job that you're in right now is not the best thing or is not good for your mental health. If there's one thing about diving, I can tell you yeah. it's probably one of the best jobs for your mental health. It was for me at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially if you Definitely. get to be in a beautiful place on the beach within palm trees in the sun all day every day it's literally the dream oh it is it is absolutely fantastic yeah mm. okay so tell me a little bit about what is your favorite diving activity so i mean what do you do what is your favorite thing do you prefer wreck diving teaching free diving what's your favorite thing to do out there also a, a tricky one is well they, there's so much to, to choose from um for me it was always wreck diving wreck diving was a, a huge one for me that um just the, the fact that you're learning about the history like first you're learning about the history of the wreck um then you have this this man-made structure underwater uh, that, that you actually can go into the, the sometimes you can penetrate the wreck, sometimes you can just swim around. But wreck diving, I, I think it was during my advanced open water. Um, one of the sorry, during my um, advanced adventure, one of the dives we did was actually wreck dive. And as we got closer to it, we the visibility wasn't great. It was like I said in the uh, in the winter, um, fourteen degrees, freezing cold, and and as you get there. You see this this dark, big gloomy thing. You're like, ah, oh, what is? This? As you as you start swimming closer, you realize, yeah, this massive wreck, like with the this uh, front on it facing you. Like, oh, this is amazing. And as we're swimming around, you get to explore. The, uh, it is. I mean, I'm I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Right now. <laughs> uh, wreck diving for me is is always a fascinating thing. Um, I I love teaching. I definitely one of the favorite most favorite things as well um, to be honest i reckon teaching might even be above wreck diving so if if you ask me from like a ah, i guess teaching wreck diving explain, courses but... might be the one yes there we go <laughs> there we go love it <laughs> um yeah t teaching is it's just the the joy to see in like the when you're having students uh, from from all walks of life they they might be young backpackers there might be um people that already have like an established job have a family and they want to try something new now they, and, and just interacting with them and and watching their progress as they are going through the course as their abilities get better as they're getting confident with equipment and in the water it's amazing um so i reckon teaching might actually be like the <laughs> my favorite part very closely very closely followed by wreck diving yeah, I think, so I, think I, I love teaching, but if, if I'm going for dives on my own, I love wreck diving or we have a lot of um, limestone in the Angto Marine It's all out of limestone in the Angto Marine Park. There's a lot of caverns, a lot of caves, so you can go exploring into that people haven't been before. So it's like this exploring in, in, in this gloomy, dark place where, where not a lot of people have been before. For me, this is it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. I think, I think that's a very good answer, especially also because generally just the idea of teaching diving i just watched this new Cousteau documentary the other day mm. and back in the days diving and going to space was seen as almost the same thing and just look at us now like what is it 40 50 yeah. 70 years later maybe not, no, not 70 yeah um and we are now teaching regular people to go to space in a way yeah, and yeah. that's just such a crazy fascinating thought and we're going to places maybe that never anybody else has not seen before so that's a, a very good answer and just another point to wreck diving i am also a big fan but i'm i really the coolest part for me in wreck diving is going to like historical wrecks and mm -hmm. just seeing how stuck in time is like you're traveling back to world war one 
and everything's almost still the same way besides the yeah. few crazy people who took things off the racks um, yeah but that's that's one really cool thought about wreck diving for me that i really agree with so that's i i have to really wreck wrecks are amazing but Definitely. i prefer the historical <laughs> ones the newer ones they they creep me out a bit <laughs> but it's just me it, it, it's also like it's also part of it like not necessarily creeping up but like the, the fact that it's like it's got this this weird feeling to it of like it's yeah like going to you, cemetery you know, almost <laughs> you're diving through the wreck and your know, people have been walking along there now it's all sunk underwater or you dive through like sometimes you like an old creek like the metal creaking or something oh and they're diving in into lambian through the um um through a dive there through a wreck there and it was just as we're diving through like i, I still hear this sound so predominant in my in my head now as it's like the metal was creaking it just got like oh shivers like amazing yeah i so agree in it wreck diving and you're interested in doing it definitely give it a try i can highly recommend it 100% uh go to whatever dive center you have near you and you might not think it but most dive centers actually have some access to some sort of wreck is it yeah. a sunken helicopter in a quarry next to you or is it an, a world war 2 wreck or is it a wreck of a small motorboat fishing boat uh, something most yeah. dive centers have some sort of access to a wreck which is really cool so oh, yeah. so go to your closest dive center and come check it out Okay, um, now I have another tricky one. What is your favorite dive site you've been to until this point? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one. Um, there's, many, there's many great dive sites. Um, but I do, I do have to say, like, diving at Cell Rock here on, on Copenhagen is, is for me one of the the best dive sites because like we we do get the whale sharks here and, and my absolute favorite animal is, is is a whale shark and i'll I'll never forget like every time we do see one here it's, it's this magical experience of seeing this huge huge eight meter long fish swim past you so gently and um yeah i, I reckon I'll, I'll this is this is like one of the the, the best points that are uh, for me this is Wow, it's it's just amazing. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely Cell Rock was is a good one. Then diving in, like I said, into Lambane in Bali, uh, diving the wreck there was fantastic. Um, I don't know, there's there's a lot of great dive sites. I always <laughs> like I went diving in Costa Rica trying to see the mantas. Uh, so like for me, the the big two things I want to see is is uh, or go diving with mantas and go diving with whales. And I went through Costa Rica um, in March this year diving all around the, the Pacific there and I didn't get the chance to see a manta ray. So hopefully, hopefully soon. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe next time once I get there. It's just there's so many dive spots out there. It's right now for me it, it is it is cell rock. Um, just just because the the amount the abundance of fish here is, is yeah. amazing. Like in, in tropical countries it, it is literally mind blowing. Um, yeah, another spot I really want to see is, is the Red Sea. It's going diving like Egypt. You've not been to the Red Sea. I haven't. Are you from Germany? No, I haven't. I had, the, I had the chance to go. I had the chance to go earlier this year. It's like I was actually talking to a company. Like, yeah, I'm. I'm really interested. They offered a dive. Dive job. I'm really interested in going. And then my mate came around. and was like, or oh, should we start a company in Thailand? And I was like, uh, all right, off we go. All right, let's go to Thailand. <laughs> But yeah, the Red Sea is, uh, a, the Red sea is amazing. It's right it's up like there. It's, it's got on the this, Yeah, the Red Sea got this uh, like so much color and intensity of color. It's, it's a bit different. It's almost different than like Asia. You also have, but somehow to through to probably through a little bit of destruction of the corals and yeah. all of that stuff. Um, the Red Sea has still so many more healthy reefs, even though they had destruction. But I guess. What, if one thing was good, the, the pandemic good for is some of the reefs have recovered. But yeah, I hundred percent agree with all of you. One of, one of the things that that um, I'm I'm really happy about being being back here is during the the last two years. Um, so while I was working here before, we've done with Coral Watch, we've done the the research program. We go out once a month and and document the, the health of the coral. Coming back here, doing the first dive and the the same side, I used to record the the coral health every month off 
coming back and seeing everything coming back to life was amazing. And um, actually one of our, our Thai partners of the company, he is, uh, he's organizing um, a coral nursery. So we're actually getting to spend um, a lot of, like hopefully soon, we're gonna get a program up and running to spend a lot of our dives planting coral or, or having young people that wanna do like a, a semester abroad if they're studying biology or marine biology they can actually come over for like half a year and do um, a coral nursing program with us where, where we teach them the, the coral ID um, and teach them uh, a lot about, yeah, maybe the advanced adventure or something. Um, and then also get to plant their own coral and, and getting young people inspired into like the health of the ocean, why it is important. And yeah, showing people like how to plant and seed your own corals and then building coral banks around the island. So it's a very, a very great project I'm, I'm super excited for, for to like finally start rolling um so yeah there's lots of interesting things to come that's so cool that's really cool and um for training centers to really also take the time to care about the ocean to care about the environment is so so important because yes maybe caring doing cleanups doing all of that stuff doing coral nursing programs like you just said it doesn't bring you money indirectly, but you have to keep the reefs healthy and alive somehow, because otherwise yeah. uh, they're not going to be interesting anymore, in a way. Oh, so it's, that's, it's, that's it's a really important thing. That. Yeah, it's also, I think it's, it's part of, of your job to, to make sure the, the oceans that you are showing to other people, like that, that you are working as, a, having as, as your office, basically, to make sure it's, it's in shape, just the same as, Someone that's working as a gardener is making sure that their the lawn is is getting trimmed and their the hedges are like trimmed. Uh, it's the same thing that we need to make sure that the, the our office, like the the coral reefs and and all the the ocean that we're working in, is in as good of a condition as we can provide. So yeah, being being able to to help or like to do things that that have a positive impact is fantastic and it's absolutely great work that I love doing. But then also having people that are interested in learning about it and showing them how to do it so so they learn they want to do the the, the same way they they like incorporate the the ideology it's amazing i 100 agree and that's and that's so cool and one thing more that i wanted to say because you you just explained that the reef bounced back a little bit and yeah. i think that's such an amazing fact about our ocean that if you just give it the tiniest of breaks uh, it can still bounce back and there is still there's still hope let's call it that because there's a lot of documentaries and a lot of things that obviously have to paint the picture of doom and gloom um, yeah. but we also have to acknowledge that there is still hope for our oceans we just have to all do our part to to make it to make it better yeah oh there's there's a foundation here on the island called Corsi and literally this is their slogan there is still hope they have it printed <laughs> on the back of their t-shirts walking around the island, which is, as you said, I was like, yes, this is exactly, exactly what we're talking about. Give it, That's give amazing. the ocean the chance to regenerate. And, and it, it's amazing how, like how mother nature is, is coming back and yeah, it's restoring itself. We just need to give it the, the time and the ability to do so. And, and teaching people about it is, I reckon it's the first step, Make, yeah. making people aware. And, and that's the thing, what you don't know you want love, right? That's the saying. So to care about the ocean, you really have to learn about the ocean and see it and fall in love with it like all of us did. So oh, if yeah. anybody's watching there that is only considering to maybe do their first open water dive, go for it. Don't, Absolutely. don't, don't Absolutely. even think about not doing it. It's the best yeah. thing you can ever do for yourself um, for an understanding of the environment. And I think one thing that that sense of the world is bigger than just me is a thing that you learn on your first open water dive, that you go in the water and you just see that surrounding the nature and it's not just you. Uh, so that's a very important point there. Go diving, people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, this is exactly what, what happened to me on, on my first dive. Like you, you take your first breath underwater and, and you realize like this is, there is this, this alien world around us that, that we hardly ever see or, or know about, but there's so much going on that, that is, you, you would, like, you normally would never see that. And, and it's, it's this alien world where it's just like, the laws of physics don't apply anymore because you're floating weightless in the water. 
um, there is creatures that, that you've never seen before in your life where, where you go like, wow, I didn't even know animals would do certain things for certain ways or like look certain ways. It's, it's fantastic. It's, yeah. Like, like you were saying, it's a little bit like back in the day, people were comparing it to, to going out of space. It is like, you are on this, you're going on the water, you are on this alien wall. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. 100%. Okay, I have one last question for you today. And that is, what is your dream diving destination? A place you haven't been yet, let's call it that. Yeah. I reckon for me, it'd be the Maldives. Because I was talking with, um, before, yeah, before coming here, I was talking with um, Dreamland Divers Resort. Uh, they're on, on an uh, SSI shop on an island in the Maldives, and I really wanted to go there and work for them for a while. And then it's like, ah, I'm going back to Thailand. Same thing again. Um, but yes, yeah, for me, the Maldives and just like the seeing the marine light there, definitely seeing the manta rays, hopefully. The mantas? Oh, <laughs> you, you, the it, depending on where you go in the Maldives, but you generally have a very good shot at seeing some mantas. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, and yes, yeah, I've, I've heard there's just beautiful branching corals there, all different colors. And yeah, I reckon like definitely, definitely a good trip to, to go there. Um, 100%. I but but it's not so far for you now, so maybe you do it on one of your holidays. <laughs> oh, yeah. Quick hop, skip, and a jump, and, and you're almost there. <laughs> but yeah, there's this thing, like, probably, I, I don't know if I'd like go working there or go there as a holiday. Um, I, I probably love doing both, to be honest. Mm. Like, yeah. even, even just try and find a dive shop that says, like, all right, I'm going to come over for like a month or two months and work there for most of the time and just enjoy the diving. Mm. Uh, which again is the beauty of being a diving instructor right you yes, can just yes. literally travel the world dive and live as a traveling dive instructor um, oh, absolutely, it's a yeah. possibility you can see the world so even if you think now oh traveling the world is so expensive i will never be able to do it become a dive instructor uh yes it's not the best paying job in the world i will never say that but you also travel the world. Uh, you yeah. see, you meet people, you meet so many people, you meet people from all over the world that you can then go on another hand and visit and see there and stay with them. So it really allows you to travel the world on a budget. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And, and plus also like, well, the, the beauty of it is while you're working as a dive instructor, if you get to a dream location, most people get to spend two, three weeks on a holiday there. You actually get to live there. You get to embrace the culture. You get to meet the local people, and you actually like find out about a lot of spots that might not be obvious to to a tourist that only stays there for two weeks. You get to like really explore what the country is about. You really get to see like all the the in the places. And if you've been there for long enough that you say like this was amazing, you can still go to the next place and keep working there. So it's yeah. And, Plus, and the you, cool you get to thing wake up in a dream destination every morning and, and get to teach customers and doing what is essentially the best job in the world. Which and, is. and that's the thing, right? The cool thing about diving, diving really only happens in the most beautiful places of the world. <laughs> um, big dive centers yeah, no, and dive yeah. centers that look for instructors are generally in these amazing places, looking for Maldives, Egypt, Thailand, uh, all over the US, like thinking of Mexico, Philippines. Argentina, there's literally Great Philippines. Barrier Reef everywhere yes. australia uh -huh. um all of those places that you think are like the most beautiful dream destinations uh there's usually diving there and it's usually very busy diving so people are looking for instructors oh, yeah. with language skills and all of that kind of stuff yeah, so yeah go definitely. for it people i'm really excited well thank you very much lucas um do you have any last words to our to our clients out there customers potential future customers for you um yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah definitely if anybody's interested in, in coming to thailand Kofanyang, um feel free to contact me anytime if you have questions I'm happy to help uh, but also like to to come back to the main topic of the, the talk of like being a, an, a diving instructor and living the dream it is certainly something i can put to ever like give to everyone saying like please consider giving it a try like even if you've never been diving tr give it a try going and diving for for once and you might you most definitely will fall in love with it if 
you've already done got like like 30 40 50 belt, uh, dives under your belt and, and you're thinking about going pro definitely do it i can highly recommend it um I'm, i think this is probably one of the like if not the best thing that ever happened to me in my life um so yeah to to anyone who's who's cons even considering maybe in the future doing it i'd say definitely consider being a, a diving instructor it is it is an industry well worth getting into it gives you a life full of enjoyment um like we were saying earlier it is not the best paying job in the world money wise but it is one of the best paying jobs for memories for like seeing the world for, for traveling for having a, a fulfilling life that is that is balanced with not just working but also seeing amazing places and like you were saying in the beginning for for your mental health it is definitely one of the best jobs there is in the world i guess it, it's there's not a lot of jobs that you actually wake up in the morning excited to go to work you love and you laugh while you're working and then you go home with a smile calm waiting for the next morning to wake up and do it all over again so yes i can i can definitely encourage everyone to give give it a shot or like at least considering it <laughs> Awesome. Thanks so much, Lucas. I think you were literally the perfect candidate showing off how amazing it can be for our first live talk in the series. Next Sunday, Definitely. I will actually have an IT She's called Belinda. She is originally from South Africa. She works in the Solomon Islands, does a lot of programs there, teaching the locals. So I'm really excited about that. And everybody that's considering, like I said, becoming an instructor, going pro with SSI, uh, continue following us every Sunday. Uh, we have all types of different career options. Becoming an instructor, just an instructor, is obviously an amazing option. But there's also other things. You can up your career, become an instructor trainer, an instructor certifier. You can go into a different field, maybe be a marine biologist along with being a dive guide. It's a really, really good career option together. Thinking about underwater photography, all of those options we will be exploring in the next few talks. So I'm really excited to have everyone. Thank you again, Lucas. I'm really excited. Lucas will put his contact information in the comments for anybody that wants to contact him. Uh, so yes, you just go into the comments and put your, your, your details there. So if you want to get in touch with him, want to go to Kopangan, it's definitely worth the trip if you can get in there at the moment. Otherwise, after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We will be here. We'll be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So thank you very much, very much, everyone for watching. And I'll see you guys next Sunday. And thanks, Lucas, again. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye.